And that's why I say it's not that there's not a need for the product or services that you don't know how to sell your product or service or you don't know how to handle the customers that are in front of you. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that that's actually more of a likely factor of 42% unable to sell. Yes, and unable or unwilling or the inability to communicate with the customer. Hello everybody, welcome back to the newsroom. I am your host, Neil Winteregg, joined as always by CEO of Matterhorn Business Development, Dr. Greg Winteregg, dentist and author. So welcome to you. Um, this isn't our first video of the year, but it's actually one of the first ones we filmed for the year. So we feel like it's the new year. So depending on when you're watching this, who knows, but we're in mid-season form, I can assure you of that. Of now, <laughs> always, <laughs> always. Now today we want to talk about Profit First. Um, this is actually the first video I've done about Profit First because we're tying Profit First into a business newsroom article. Um, mm -hmm. Profit First, if you don't know, is this book right here written by Mike Michalowicz. We are a Profit First professional firm. And um, we have an article here about business failing and we want to tie it in with Profit First. Now, if you're new to the Profit First mentality, there is a link in the description to download the first two chapters of the book for free. It's a free sample, so be sure you pick that up. This book will change how you operate with your business and your finances and make things a lot easier. So today, we are talking about an article out of visualcapitalist.com. Um, this is called, Why Do Businesses Fail? And so we have some interesting statistics here from the article, and I'm gonna go over a couple of them and then we're gonna talk about it. So, And as usual, we have our own spin. As usual. <laughs> I'm always smarter than the author. Uh, so this article states that as far as small businesses go in the United States, 99.7% of all businesses are small businesses. Now, for this article, a small business is under 100 employees. We did a video earlier off of a different study that said 89% of businesses were small businesses, and that was with under 25 employees. So that extra 10% is a 75% or 75 employees. That's quite a quite a big number there. And also, if you stick with that number, it's interesting, um, the 99.7, then that means 56.8 million people are employed by those small businesses, which is 48% of the workforce. So it is interesting that, according to this study, three tenths yeah. of the businesses Apple, in America, Google, yeah, Netflix, they employ GM, half, yeah. half the people. Yeah, no, it's interesting. But now we're more small business mentors, so yeah, we so like this the small business is the market. group we want to talk about. This is the group we want to talk about. And yep. if you are a business owner, then here are some facts and figures for you to know. Seventy percent of small businesses fail in the first ten years. Uh, Fifty percent fail in the first five years. Okay, and this article has some really good facts and figures in it and some solutions, but we're going to talk about some of our other solutions. Now, most people think that uh, the first year is the hardest. That's a 20% failure rate. Um, that's actually not too bad, 20%. I really don't think so. I, I actually, think that's actually... I thought it was going to be higher than yeah. that. Yeah, and then year two is 34%. Yeah. And it's not, just so we're clear, it's not 34% of the remaining 80% that didn't fail. This is an accumulative statistic. Correct. So, 20% fail in year one, 34% fail in year two, 50% by year five, 70% of businesses are gone yeah. by year 10. And to no surprise to any of us, four out of the five worst cities to work in are in California. Which so would be will, Stockton, uh, Modesto, San Bernardino, and Santa Rosa. Interesting. One, two, three, and five, topped only by Allentown, Pennsylvania, coming in at number four. Interesting. So anyway, um, if you want to start a small Just interesting, business, interesting little side don't note. do it in California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just some advice. So now here's the real bulk of this and why we want to talk about that. These are the top reasons that the business has failed. We're going to highlight a couple of them. 82% uh, experience cash flow problems and 29% run out of cash. Uh, which is why we want to talk about profit first with mm -hmm. this. Um, now, here was two interesting facts and figures, which I think they have wrong in this article. 42% say that there is no need for the products or services that that business offers. Mm -hmm. And then it says 14% ignore customers. I actually think that these numbers are wrong. Mm -hmm. I think that if there is no need for your product or service or your lost in the, the shuffle, lost in the herd of everybody else who's also a plumber or whatever it might be. Um, I don't think that that's true. I think that that 42% fail because they can't communicate and they can't sell their product or service. Agreed, and if if that 42% that number is accurate, 
then I don't think the company is going to make it to year two, three, five, right. and 10. And if that were the case, it'd be higher than 20% fail in the first year. Correct. So then let's so talk I think about that, that. Most most people outside of business just get confused with customer service, sales-oriented communication, taking care of the customer. And so then that almost becomes like a secondary or tertiary thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's all about your systems and your your market value and your brand. And actually those follow the other thing. And that's why I say, it's not that there's not a need for the product or services that you don't know how to sell your product or service, or you don't know how to handle the customers that are in front of you. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that that's actually more of a likely factor of 42% unable to sell. Yes, and unable or unwilling or the inability to communicate with the customer. Yes. And I would say, and we've done videos on this before, the easiest way to beat your competition is not on price. The easiest way to beat your competition is on customer service. And if a co you've got a customer, even a prospect, then follow them up right away, get permission to call them back within a day or two. Don't just email them a quote, like show up, care about them, help them solve their problem and do what you say. Yeah. If you're like, okay, it's Monday, I'm gonna have a quote to you by Wednesday at noon, do that. Yeah. And so I think I agree with you that 14% ignoring customers, I think it's probably 42% fail because they ignore their customers. Absolutely. And that usually happens because it's hard to, to talk to people, you're afraid they're gonna be upset, et cetera, et cetera. Quite honestly, that's good news for small business owners because if your competition can't handle communication with the customers and you can, then all of a sudden you don't have any competition. No, you are your only competition at that exactly. point. For more on that, we do have a playlist on the professional salesman with videos of us talking about that. So mm -hmm. be sure you click on that. Not enough people watch those because you think that marketing and selling are the same thing and that sales is not your problem. Selling is your only problem in business. <laughs> so be sure you click on that. And we are gonna have another video that we are filming soon on more customer service related things. So mm -hmm. there will be another video to come out and talk about that. So then that kind of segues into the cash flow. Right, so the cash flow is 82% experience cash flow problems. Right. That's a big problem to have. That's a big problem. So why don't you talk about that from a profit first perspective? Well, so there's, there's two aspects of this and Neil's right. There is no cash if you cannot sell. No sales causes a cash flow problem. Now, you have cash. And it's interesting here, according to this study, 80% of businesses are still open after year one, so they have cash, all right? But then 82% of those fail because of cash flow problems. So in the profit first system, Mike Michalowicz talks about switching the typical formula. Typical formula is sales gives you income, you have your income, you take out your expenses, and profit is what's left. However, what he does is he switches the formula and that you have your sales minus your profit. Now inside that profit number is gonna be uh, your reserves, your pay, your taxes, that's all considered part of profit. You take that out and then you run the business with what is left. And so what it does is it flips the formula because what we have seen is when there's cash there, the business owner usually spends it. Yes. And it's justified in that I'm investing back in my business. And we've had we've, we've had clients go up 25, 35% in a year and then tell us, well, I didn't make any more money. I invested in my business. No, let's let's just call it for what it is. You took your profit and you spent it. Yeah, you wasted it on crap. You, you wasted it on a $4,000 computer when an $800 rebuild would have worked. You bought a $750 chair when at this moment, you know, a hundred bucks from Office Depot would have worked. So cash flow is there if you're still in business after a first year. You've got to clamp it down. It's not like, wow, I've got this 20 grand. Now I can get that real professional website. Um, no, you can you can piece one together for 2,500 bucks. And if your goal is to make a living from your business and have it just not be a hobby, you really need to take a look at Profit First. We are Profit First professionals. Abby can even give you some links to some of our Profit First videos. The real issue on cash flow problems is not the proper cash flow management, and you really need to pay yourself first. 
And so the, the link that we're putting down below is for the first two chapters of the book. But you really have to, I mean, to me, this article highlights for me two things. One is cash flow management. If you're still open after the first year, you have cash. Otherwise, you would have, you would have gone closed before. And then customer service. And I'm with you, Neil. I disagree with those percentages because if you're servicing your customer better than your competition, then everything's going to be fine. Yeah. And one last thing I want to say is that it's interesting to be at 70% fail in 10 years. Yeah. You'd think that after you hit year five, year six, year seven, you'd be fine. Right. But that means that there's some serious mismanagement going on to yep. where after 10 years you can't keep up and then it comes out from underneath you. That should not be happening after 10 years. I agree with you. And I think in those last five years, that's where cash flow management and the customer service are really destroying the place. Yeah. I mean, my goodness, you've worked hard, you got yourself established, you've been open for five years, and then we lose another 20% of the businesses in that last five years. That's just, that's poor customer service, lack of sales, and lack of cash flow management. Absolutely. So we hope this has been helpful. Uh, leave us some comments if there's other opinions, other viewpoints, we welcome those. And also, if you want us to, to make another video about another aspect of businesses failing or any of these topics, let us know and we'll be sure to pump one out for you. Hit the like button, subscribe down below if you're new around here, and we'll see you later.